another books and booze podcast. <laughs> another what do you say? Another month. Another month. Another a new book and a new spirit and a new boo. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm Kristen. I'm Leilani, and this is books and booze. <laughs> so the spirit we are introducing this time is the Siesta Key Spiced Rum. Mm-hmm. Right. I love that we're back to a Florida liquor. Right. Yes. This is great. And how nice for spring to get into the rums, right? Yeah, gearing up for that summer, baby. Absolutely. So Siesta Key Spice Rum is is from the Drum Circle Distilling in Siesta Key, Florida. Have you been to Siesta Key, Florida? I'm trying to think if I have. I believe I have. Beach is like powdered sugar. It is so beautiful in Siesta Key. They have really great little shops and restaurants. It's a beautiful town. Yeah. Yeah. I believe I have. It sounds a lot like the West Coast of Florida, right? Yep. Yeah, it's along the Gulf Coast yeah. there. Absolutely. Powdery sand. Love it. Yep. And what I love, you know, we've been seeking out these small distillers, right? Troy Roberts, is, you know, launched the company and he wanted to hold on to how to produce their the rum. Okay. In the original, like, small batch distilling. Okay. That was used before the big batch was introduced. Okay. So, um. He keeps those methods in place. He uses local Florida sugar cane to make molasses. Okay. He uses local honey. Okay. And just a myriad of spices, apparently. So we're about to try it. (laughs) Okay. Are we ready? Yes, let's do it. Okay. So we just did a neat little pour here. My glass says skull, which is like cheers and then yours says salute, I believe. Salute. Salute. <laughs> and it's cool. And cheers. And cheers. cheers. And opa. Opa. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, my. It's really good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I have to be honest. Mm-hmm. I'm not a huge... <laughs> I'm not a huge rum person in general like for just sipping yeah like i do enjoy it in cocktails so like kevin made us a kind of a take on a mai tai um so that's what we're going to be enjoying for the rest of our but wow okay it is good it's there's caramel i get a little bit of a banana note in it do you i don't don't know it's almost like a pineapple cream in there too i don't know it's creamy Really good. It is. It's almost it's, it's almost like a, a a pina colada that's not a pina colada right? glass, you know? I wonder if we had, because this is just a neat pour. Um, I wonder if we had just shaken it with ice, made it cold. Oh, right. I could drink it just like this. Maybe our next episode. I could drink it just like this. <laughs> well, well done, Troy. And apparently, as his business grew, he wanted to keep it a family business. Oh. I loved this. Ah, that's good. I he like that too. brought in his fiance and two lifelong friends. Yeah. To be able to help build his business. So I thought that was awesome. So, all right. Are you ready to try it? Yes. Okay. Let's do so This it. is, like I said, Kev made us kind of a take on a Mai Tai. Yes. I don't think we had quite everything. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers to you. I'm always so scared I'm going to drop it. Cheers to you. Hi. Thanks for joining us today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, dangerous. Oh, this is so dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. So good. Okay. Mm. Well, well done, Troy, with a beautiful spiced rum. I'm going to need a side card. <laughs> side card. <laughs> Where's the magic hand that Ray <laughs> one in? <laughs> I don't think we left him any on the side, so we'll have to wait. We'll have to leave that, we'll have to wait. <laughs> that episode. The model's going to be down to him, and that's how we'll come back on, guys. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, all right. Delicious. Tell me why this book. What an amazing book. Uh, it's a, so I actually haven't read this one before. Um, before doing our podcast. Before, now, be, right? Yeah, before yeah. doing our podcast. So this is the first time for me, too. And um, one of the reasons why uh, I, I was interested in reading, I've, I've had a couple people recommend it, but it he really dives into what the next five moves should be as you're going into business, right? And and how to align yourself correctly, how to grow your business, how to be an effective CEO, if that's or what your goal is. If yeah. That's what your yeah. goal is. And um, so I figured it kind of it, we, we wrapped up our last book, which was Emit, that was uh, talking about the journey and processes. Right. You know, hello, is it? You saw it up so much better than me about Emit here. Well, it is just the, the having the mindset of going into your business with a business owner lens versus just an entrepreneur Thank lens you. and setting the systems up in place. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> she successfully launched that this guy. <laughs> I'm really, I'm not, not even tipsy. It's just really, she's really good at this stuff, guys. 
And so having the next five moves, I thought would be a good addition to that, because as you're setting your, you know, that transition from business owner or in, into getting your processes set up, what best to know, what should you do? What are the next five moves you should be looking into? And since it came highly recommended, it just aligned with the, with the next book we should read in succession for this year. Absolutely. And what I love, each of the books we've read, we've gotten a little bit of backstory to the author, which I think uh -huh. is really important, right? Yes, you want to know why they're even credible. But what I get more inspiration out of several of these authors is they came from ground zero. Yeah. And when you want to talk about someone coming from ground yeah. zero... Literal ground zero. <laughs> yeah. My, I mean, he grew up in a war torn yep. I Iran, I believe. Yeah, I think yes. it was Iran. They and it was in the middle of the Iraq Iran war. Yeah. And he's I remember him saying something in his intro that they would hear the, the whistles or the yep. sounds. Yeah. And the parents, him and his parents that came over as a refugee. The refugees, yes. yes. And he came over. And literally, I mean, I had chills when I was reading it. They crossed the bridge yeah. and out of either the city within hours yeah yeah i have chills yeah. you know what i mean and it's just wow and yeah. so he he comes over and his journey is not an easy one he was not scholastic like he did not test well yeah he kept saying what well, he had a 1.9 gpa <laughs> right and <laughs> it was repeated multiple times we get it patrick <laughs> Um, but so scholastically he did not do well yeah um he really just couldn't hone in and focus on anything and I think then even once he eventually got here to the States, I believe his parents divorced. Yeah. His mom landed up, you know, through challenges and struggles. There was a time of their life where she was on welfare. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so you talk about someone coming from ground zero yeah. and finding their why deep inside of them. Right. Yeah. And, and, and the why, I mean, my goodness, his why, it, it extends. It, I love how he... I don't even think he realized it too. Uh, his why, and he knows why he's doing what he's doing. He knows his greater purpose and he understands his drive, but it's so deeply embedded to even how he speaks, yeah. right? It's so embedded into how he approaches and speaks to others, mm -hmm. you know, um, about other people. It's just, it's just incredible. Um, he's, uh, it was, a you know, the first time I came across him, I came across his uh, YouTube channel, which is Valuetainment. Mm -hmm. And it, he was a little hard to stomach, you know, me being this independent woman and this man being a very strong <laughs> machismo man. It was a little hard to stomach. However, however, taking that out, you know, thinking, taking his message, his, his journey, his message, his journey, his purpose, mm -hmm. and that his his greater his greater purpose is just to help others and, yeah. and help others succeed very very incredible messages that he puts out there. absolutely and much like yeah. we heard in atomic habits he connects the the mindset of a chess player right we heard a little bit about wow. right and he talks about he had watched a movie or a documentary about somebody named magnus or yeah. something like that a norwegian chess player uh -huh. and he, he watched that documentary and he kind of understood that successful chess players can yep. see 12 moves ahead. 12 moves ahead. Yeah. And then he kind of aligned, you know, someone, you know, current for us. I mean, Elon Musk is everywhere doing everything, right? How, what is he not doing? What is he not doing? <laughs> uh, but apparently Elon played yes. chess as yeah. a child. Yeah. And there's something about when you are launching a business and running a business. And we even read this in Emeth. You need to plan ahead. Yep. You need to make your business. You need to launch your business as turnkey, yep. like we read in Emeth, and that's a little bit of what you know. He's nodding to here. If you can calculate every decision you make five moves ahead, you know he talks about a master chess player. I guess being able to see those twelve moves ahead. Yeah, master chess players can see twelve moves ahead, but was it the average can see five? I guess or six? well, he picked five uh -huh. because he says it's the sweet spot between making a swift decision okay. and, and kind of staying in the moment, right? Okay. A lot of times, I think he uses analysis paralysis cliche. As, I like that one too. Oh, sure. Seizure. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. He, if you think too far ahead, yeah. you can get in that world of... You, you get stuck and you don't do. Yep. Yeah, because yeah, you're too worried. Oh, what if this? What if yeah. this? Yeah. So he really says five moves ahead, Yeah. Uh, which I think ties back to so many of the things that we've read in successful business planning and growing. Yeah. Um, but I like how he begins to really get into, he, he dabbles in his why a little bit, 
and he worked, I guess, at Bally's. And I know we read that in future chapters. He was like, he sold gym memberships or something yeah, like that. Bally's Total Gym. Yep. Out in Hollywood, California. <laughs> right. But he also had kind of two moments in his life that shaped his why. Mm-hmm. And the first was he didn't get what he wanted out of Bally's and he felt like he couldn't, he wanted to surround himself with people he could trust. Yep. And he wanted to build a business with people who were dependable. So that was one of his whys. And then his uh-huh. other why was when his dad was very sick yeah. in the hospital. That one got me. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Right? Like that he, one got me. He re- I, think, I, be, I think everyone. So he his dad was really, really sick. And his dad was not getting. I'm not, sorry, I took this one over. No. But his dad was very, very sick. And he wasn't getting the care um, that he thought he was. She should be getting in the hospital. And. In a very condensed version, hospital staff pretty much just said, well, you're on, um, you're like a public health, you're on public health care. And if you want to be treated differently, go get yourself privatized health care. And just pretty much was like, you know, shoot him away. And so he just had that sting. He's like, man, I can't even take away, take care of my father the way that I want to take care of my father. And that hit me. That really, really hit me because, um, one of my stories that I have is that, um, I, you know, there was a period of time where I had to clean houses and uh, my son was very, very young. He was in the car seat and um, I literally would go into the houses and I was getting paid $10 a room. So imagine a full three bedroom house is getting paid $30 to pay uh, to clean this house. And I would have to t- take my son with me. And at the time he was like four or five months old in the car seat. And I would sit him down on, you know, the living room floor and put on whatever cartoon. He's only little. But and then vacuum around him, you know, or I would carry him into the bedroom or making the bed and sit him on the floor and make the bed. And it was just I had a moment one day where I was like, this is not my life. This cannot be my life. I refuse for it to be my life. And I remember in that moment in time, it was something that hit me and a chain of events happened, which. Maybe one day I'll share with you guys. (laughs) Um, And it it was that pivotal moment. I was like, no, I'm going to do something different for my life. Not how I want to raise my son. Yeah. yeah. It reminds me of that uh, cinematic moment in Gone with the Wind. Uh-huh. Well, Scarlett O'Hara is like out on her her hillside and she's like, I swear we will never go hungry again <laughs> coming out of the war. And, yeah. And from then on, she figured out yeah. how to make yeah. it happen. Yeah. Right. It was not the way it was before yeah. the war. And, and you will triumph. You will triumph. Yeah. And that's what it was for him. Yeah. He said, he realized he's going out, spending his money clubbing three or four times a week. He talked about how many times he went to Vegas. Yeah. And he literally had to do a hard stop with his friends. Yep. And he had to hit the grind. Yep. Yep. And that was the you gotta moment. You got to get serious. You got to get, yeah. You got to get serious. You got to get real. If you want big things, you want big things to happen to you, you got to think big and you got to do big. Mm-hmm. You know? Absolutely. So that was amazing because I feel like so many entrepreneurs that we talk to and people who want to launch their own business they just worry oh nobody else in my family has done it i don't have the financial yeah. backing for it yeah i don't have this i'm not that and just what do you want yeah excuse situs <laughs> right <laughs> the stories we tell ourselves <laughs> the stories we tell ourselves so at one point you will hit so low yeah. that you decide the yeah. day's the day that I'm not going to stay here. I'm not going to go back there. I'm not going to be that anymore. And some of his other wives, whereas he wanted his name to mean something. Yeah. And I just, I thought all of that was just so powerful. Yeah, that was his legacy. His, mm-hmm. For him is his name. His name is, if his name is remembered, that's his legacy. And it just, it's funny because again, it drove me back to me. My legacy, my why is my family because they are my legacy. One day I'll no longer be here. But how they remember me and the stories they tell about me will be my legacy that carries forward. And so that constant thought of how my family views me, sees me, looks up to me is what guides me in every decision that I decide to take. I love that. I love, I love that. <laughs> so this is really just an intro to the book, this, this episode. Yeah. Um, he then is going to go into the five main things to master. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For your next five moves. Yeah. Uh, And to recap them, they're knowing yourself, the ability to reason, uh, building the right team, yep, mastering a strategy to scale, and mastering power plays. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So. Good one. um, 
I am really excited to dig deeper into this. Me too. Right. That's I, a, I'm really looking forward to it. And and I'm really glad we got to read it together. Absolutely. Because yeah. it's fun. Like, oh my gosh, this. Did you realize yeah. this? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and, yeah, and, and uh, we, we try not to go too deep into right. it. Right. Because it's a little real on the show yeah. here. Yeah. 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 So you guys are seeing our reaction. But sometimes I'm like, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah so. absolutely so thank you for recommending this book oh, yeah. i'm really enjoying that guys this is going to be an amazing next few episodes right yeah. you're ready to launch your own business or you already have and you just feel you're not sure what to do like if so many of these incredible authors that we're reading can start from a war-torn country yeah um you know parents divorced mother on where welfare father sick yeah you can do Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. There is nobody who can't go after their dream. Exactly. So um, let's help each other know our next five moves and launch some amazing legacies, right? Yes. <laughs> Cheers to that. All right, guys. Thank you for joining in for this episode. Please, we are working on building our YouTube family here. It helps us when you like and subscribe. I would love some comments of where is your journey starting? What is your why? You know, what are you digging into here? Or what would you drink with rum? We'd love to know that too. Give us a suggestion for us. Another episode, right? Wow. Cheers, guys. Sing your Thank you. Grab a good what do you, yeah. you start. You start. Grab a good book. Get some awesome booze. And grab a good buddy to share it with. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>